is so much we have learned through science and medical experiments that have changed our world. And a lot of the time it's for the better. But sometimes, well, let's just say some experiments should have been left to the imagination. Welcome back to The Most Amazing Everybody. Today I've got a crazy list for you. So buckle up and let's dive into the top 10 evil experiments that took place in Texas. Starting us off at number 10, dog experiments. A few years back, Peter released a scathing expose on the Texas A&M University's laboratories. What was branded as a breeding program turns out to have been closer to a cruel experiment under the guise of science. It turns out that they had been actively lying about their dog breeding program and were actually using the dogs for cruel and painful experiments. Dogs under their care were deliberately bred to develop a crippling form of canine muscular dystrophy that prevented most of the dogs from walking, eating properly, or having any kind of quality of life. From there, they would use the dogs in experiments involving biopsies and these devices that stretched their muscle tissue, causing them not only incredible pain during the procedures, but ultimately forcing many of the dogs to be euthanized due to the toll it put on their bodies. Apparently, the university had been doing these kinds of experiments for nearly 40 years before PETA was able to put an end to it, and thankfully, all of the dogs have now been rescued and are being sent to new homes. Next up at number 9, Hepatitis. In the 1950s, one institution ran a very, very dark experiment that I honestly can't quite believe was able to happen even that long ago. The institution was for disabled people, specifically those deemed to have mental illnesses or mental disorders at that time. And due to the highly unsanitary conditions of this institution, many contracted hepatitis. You would think that this would maybe make them go, Oh, maybe we should tidy up around here, protect those that are under our care, but that was not really their approach. Instead, Dr. Saul Krugman proposed an experiment to try and develop a vaccine. Now, while I can appreciate the thought that was behind his proposition, rather than testing on the already contracted citizens, they actually began purposefully infecting people with the disease to assist in the experiment. Now, don't get it twisted, there were many folks against this from the start, but ultimately, parents of the admitted people gave their permission to infect them and use them in the study. So forth they went. It's kind of crazy to believe that someone would actually go along with that, but apparently they didn't seem to care too much about infecting disabled people with a deadly disease. So there you have it. Coming in at number eight, Project Artichoke. In the 1950s, the CIA ran a series of mind control projects called Project Artichoke, and their goal was simple, but definitely unethical. The primary goal was to see if a person could involuntarily be made to attempt an act of assassination. So essentially they were trying to see if they could mind control someone into killing another person. At first they went about trying to gain mind control by studying the test subjects subjects via hypnosis and total isolation as a means to break down the subjects. But soon they realized something was missing. In came forced morphine addictions along with a slew of other drugs, followed by forced withdrawal. They would also use chemicals to incite amnesia on the human subjects, and those that got out were left incredibly foggy and traumatized with little to no recollection of what they had been through. The study was shut down by the 1960s, likely due to the fact that they were traumatizing and forcing addiction on unsuspecting innocent civilians, but it did open the door for more research around the possibility of mind control, so you never know, maybe someday it might just be possible. Next up at number seven, the two-headed dog. In 1959, Vladimir Demikhov had a truly evil vision. His experiments were among some of the first organ and tissue transplant research, which ultimately some have argued is obviously very valuable information. But his methods were certainly unethical and definitely controversial. He started out transplanting organs by sewing them onto the outside of animals, but ultimately gained his notoriety for creating a two-headed dog. To make his Franken Einstein dog, he removed the head and front legs of a small dog from the rest of its body and then transplanted it onto a larger host dog. The dogs actually lived for four days after the experiment, declaring it seemingly successful, and they were able to see and look around during that time. So all in all, while it did help chart the course of modern transplants, it was certainly viewed as a very controversial study. Next up at number six, the Milgram experiment. Named after the psychologist Stanley Milgram, who 
spearheaded the experiment. This study began in the summer of 1961 and it looked at testing the limits of obedience. Many academics at the time wanted to take a look into what was at the core of an authoritative personality and how someone could be swayed to commit something that ultimately they didn't want to do simply because they believed they had to. A newspaper advertisement was sent out, but the details were not provided until test subjects arrived. Once the study began, the two groups were separated. One group was assigned to be an actor and the other group was tasked with shocking the person in the room after they answered a question wrong. What group two didn't know was that group one was not actually being shocked, just acting as if they were. And as it turns out, an incredibly high proportion of the subjects continued to shock the group despite thinking they were hurting them, simply because they felt they had no other choice. And later, another scientist thought the experiment needed to be amped up as he hypothesized people could have felt the victim was faking it. The new study included real life dogs as the subjects being shocked and test subjects apparently openly wept while still following orders to shock the dogs apparently proving that many humans will follow orders to a fault. Coming in at number 5, radiation. After World War II, there were many questions surrounding radioactive materials and the effects these could have on humans moving forward. Well, apparently they decided the best people to test out this incredibly harmful and dangerous study on would of course be pregnant women. Medical researchers fed radioactive edibles in the form of energy drinks to 829 pregnant women. And not only didn't they tell them what they were giving them, but they straight up lied and said that it would actually improve the health of their babies. Many of the women in the study became incredibly ill, would get covered in rashes and bruises, and some ultimately ended up developing cancer. But worst of all is that many of the fetuses were in fact born with leukemia or other forms of cancer, and the mothers didn't even know that they had been involved in an experiment in the first place. That was until it was much too late. Coming in at number 4, the syphilis study. Back in 1932, the United States Public Health Service began to dive into the natural progression of syphilis if left untreated. And listen, like I understand that these kinds of experiments provide us with knowledge of how to help protect people in the future, but what I'm saying is that there are better ways to go about it. In this study, 600 poor and illiterate men, of which only 399 previously had syphilis, were hired and none of them were told about what the experiment was going to be for, or that they had a life threatening disease in the first place. The 600 men were instead told that they were actually receiving free healthcare, meals, and burial insurance in exchange for their participation. What's even more sick is that even though penicillin was proven to be an effective cure in 1947, the study continued all the way until 1972, essentially needlessly infecting hundreds of people and watching them die of a disease that already had a cure. I mean, it's just insane that this went on for so long and it's definitely one of the most evil experiments to have seen the light of day. Coming in at number 3, eugenics. Prior to World War II, there was actually many places around the United States that were pro-eugenics. Of course, this all changed after the infamous evil experiments performed in the war, but rewind to 1907 and it was actually widely accepted across the nation. Firstly, sterilization was enacted as a hypothesis to help reduce crime rates and stop mental disabilities. And then not long after, they began to bring race in as a factor in the hopes to improve genetic stock through the sterilization of unpreferred races. Because it is women who give birth, they were often the victims of these experiments as eugenicists believed it was the best way to protect and regulate birth rates and weed out who they didn't want to be able to reproduce. Although it was first overturned in 1921, by 1927 the Supreme Court actually ruled in favor of forced sterilization, believing it would create a better society for us all to live in. I mean, it's truly horrid that this was not only legal, but encouraged by so many. Coming in at number 2, a cure for insanity. 1907 seems to have been a busy year for evil scientists, but rather than eugenics, this doctor believed he could actually cure insanity. Dr. Henry Cotton was convinced that internal organs upon developing an infection were the root cause of mental disorders. So Cotton got 
got involved with the asylum and got to researching on what he refers to as patients but really were victims of his cruel experiments. He believed that by removing the infected organ, he could not only cure his patients of their disorders but then study that organ for further research. And that's all well and fine if you're dealing with maybe a root canal, but when it comes to vital organs, it's not the same story. Dubbed surgical bacteriology, the procedures were often done without the patient's consent and he would remove teeth, tonsils and even colons and other organs of the like. To further prove his point, he even removed his own teeth along with his wife and sons too, which I mean if he was trying to prove a point, does that mean he thought he was insane? Cause why else would he remove his teeth? But in the end, 49 of his patients died, which he chalked up to end stage psychosis and to this day the project is viewed as incredibly cruel. Last up in our number one spot, the Aversion Project. Led by Dr. Aubrey Levin, this program identified homosexual soldiers from the army and subjected them to horrific medical tortures as a means to try and change their sexual orientation. Now at the time it was believed that being gay was a disease that could be and should be cured and so the experiment to convert soldiers began. The experiment lasted between 1971 to 1989 and the soldiers were submitted to extensive electric shock treatment while being forced to view explicit images of the same sex, trying to cause their brain to make negative associations with homosexuality. When the subjects didn't change, or at least didn't admit to changing their sexual orientation, they would force the victims into sex changing operations, making them effectively straight women in their eyes. Reportedly 900 gay men between 16 to 24 were surgically changed into women against their will and once the experiment was shut down, Levin fled to Canada and denied ever being a part of the cruel and evil experiment. Well there you have it guys, thanks so much for watching, I'm Kennedy and I'll see you next time.